Are you ready to create an engaged and exciting and energizing staff meeting instead of one of those ones that we all just endure? I know, they suck, don't they? Today we're going to talk about three things that help you create engaging, exciting, and energizing staff meetings. Welcome to the Surviving to Thriving podcast that helps women leaders in nonprofits get out of survival mode and thrive in both leadership and life. I'm your host, leadership development coach, Kathy Archer, and I help women leaders enjoy impactful leadership. The first thing that you need to do to create that engaging, inspiring, and energizing staff meeting is to prepare. Don't do what I used to do, which was last minute, print off an agenda, run up the stairs to the boardroom, and start the staff meeting. Being that unprepared did not help my confidence at all. If I want it to feel confident, I need to feel ready, prepared, and have everything in order. When we walk into a meeting and we're just kind of scrambling last minute, it leaves us feeling frazzled. So you need to be prepared ahead of time. What do you need to prepare? The agenda, the team, and yourself. Let's start with the agenda. There are three parts to the agenda that we have to consider. Your agenda, their agenda, and of course, the bigger organization's agenda. Your agenda is different than the staff's agenda. We have to remember that when going into meetings. What we want to do is create a way where they can also put items on the agenda or items that might be included in the agenda. You still need to have some control because you don't want to like throw out the opportunity to get sideswiped in the middle of a meeting, but create a way, a system for the people coming to the meeting to also say, could we talk about this? Is it an opportunity to discuss this item? Would this be something we could put on the agenda? That might be a virtual whiteboard. It might be the old fashioned box where you drop suggestions in, but consider a way where you can have the team members feel safe to also add their agenda items. Of course, you also need to add the items that the organization wants you to cover, review, discuss. So make sure you've got those on your agenda and also then your agenda items. What's important for you to discuss? And I think sometimes we get so caught up in what we're supposed to discuss that are sort of the tick box things. We have to cover this policy. We have to talk about this new system we're implementing. But you as a leader are trying to create a team, an engaged team, a team that is excited to be there. So you have to make sure that you include the things on the agenda that are gonna help you create that. We're gonna talk about more of those kinds of things in a moment, but think about what you might also want to include on the agenda. I have a blog post that you might wanna go look at that has the 10 questions you can ask to determine if things should be put on the agenda. And if you are a member of the training library, my membership, there is a worksheet to go with that where you actually can tick them off and see what should be on the agenda and what maybe should not be on this month's or this week's agenda. So to be prepared, you've got to prepare the agenda, you've got to prepare the team, and you've got to prepare yourself. Preparing the team is letting them know what are the objectives of this meeting. Is it just a regular monthly, weekly staff meeting? Or is there something different about this meeting that they need to know about? Prepare people ahead of time so that they know energetically, perhaps they need something to do to prepare, or just that they don't come into a meeting feeling unsure, maybe a little antsy, a little bit afraid, that they actually know what they're coming into. So make sure they know the objective of the meeting, but also the timeframes. Is this a half hour meeting? Is this an hour meeting? What do they need to know about being prepared for this meeting? And then the third thing you need to prepare is yourself. You need to you know, energetically, the wellness habits that I talk about, make sure that you've had a good night's sleep, make sure you eat before the meeting so you're not hangry going into a meeting, maybe get up and move away from your desk for a little bit, go for a quick walk before you go into the meeting. What do you need to do so that you're coming into this meeting and able to be present, which is the next thing, think about that mindfulness, maybe you just need to take a moment to step back and take a couple deep breaths, you know, think about um, slowing your, you know, nervous system down and just calming yourself down from the chaos of the day. Or if you've been like dead, maybe get up and shake things off and bring a little bit of energy. Think about that mindfully. What do you want to bring to that meeting? Which is that third point around who do I want to be? How do I want to show up at this meeting? If I'm going to be my most authentic, most engaging self, what are the character traits that I bring? I've talked a lot in my membership and with some of my 
clients and students and probably on the podcast as well around the VIA character strengths or the Gallup strengths. Look at who you are when you're at your best. How do you bring that to the meeting and what do you need to do to be that best self at the meeting? Again, if you're just going from meeting to meeting to meeting or you're drained or you have an aid or you've been sitting at your computer for three hours straight, you're probably not going to be your best self. So, you know, think about who am I? What's the impact I want to have? How do I want to engage with people? And what do you need to do to bring that to the meeting? So the first thing you need to think about is what do I need to do to prepare for the meeting? Prepare yourself, prepare your team, and prepare the agenda. The second thing that you need to do to create that engaging, maybe exciting, and energizing staff meeting is to communicate well. And you need to communicate well before, during, and after the meeting. Before the meeting, we just talked about what do you need to do to get that agenda out ahead of time so that people know, make sure that people know the outcome or the objective of the meeting. Communicate ahead of time so that people know what to expect when they come to the meeting. The second part of that communicating well is really during the meeting. And I want you to think about, again, just energetically, what are you bringing to the meeting and what are you feeling at the meeting? So use your emotional and social intelligence, which means you need to be tuned in, tapped in and sort of really aware of what's going on. We all know when something's going sideways at a meeting, but many of us just avoid that and we just keep plowing through the agenda when maybe we need to step back and say, hey, there's something going on here. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. That's your social and emotional intelligence. So you need to be tuning in and using that at the meeting. Pay attention to your way of engaging in the the meeting. Are you, you know, over them and telling them what to do and finger pointing or shaking your finger at them? Is it top down communication Or is it back and forth communication? Are you engaging them in a conversation? Are you inviting questions? Are you inviting conversation? Are you inviting ideas and input? Or is it just you going down? Because if it's just you going down, they're going to tune out real fast. So you need to find a way to engage them. Ask lots of questions, create activities, create breakout rooms or breakout groups where people can go and engage with one another and come back. And that can be for like one or two minutes. I know you don't have a ton of time at staff meetings, but even to say, okay, talk to the person beside you, or I'm going to send you into a breakout room for three minutes. Talk to the two people in that breakout room, come up with three ideas on how we can address this problem or challenge, but create opportunities for them to engage with each other and engage in the bigger group, because that engagement is going to to create the engagement we're looking for in meetings. And then after the meeting, please ditch the old fashioned minutes. We do not need a running commentary of what happened. Before the end of the meeting, make sure that you ask who will do what by when. Make sure you've got that documented. And here's the big tip. If you're a member of my training library membership, I have a whole framework for a back and forth agenda for one-to-one meetings where you're using Google Docs or something where it's a shared doc where you're both putting information in. There's ways for you to do agendas in real time. Somebody can be typing on a laptop in the middle of the meeting to make sure that we're going, okay, is that clear? Is that who said they would do what by when? And make sure that we've got that listed so that we're not creating this extra work for somebody or yourself after the meeting. If you can create in real time that just the summary of who said they would do what by when, that's enough to get through that agenda item. Then the only other thing that you might need to add to your or minutes is whatever needs to be documented for accreditation or something like that. Reviewed this policy, check, done, right? So keep your your minutes after the meeting really tight and specific. We don't need the whole running commentary. We covered the first two. Prepare and then communicate. The third one to create an engaging maybe exciting and maybe even energizing staff meeting is to engage them. And we've talked about this already. You need to create back and forth communication, conversation, back and forth energy in the meeting. You do not want to be talking to them or at them for a half hour or an hour. They will disconnect so fast it's not even funny. So make sure you are involving them in the meeting. Create those interactive activities ask questions. You don't always have to ask questions in the big group. Ask questions, send them to smaller groups where maybe they feel safer or just that that creates more engagement. If you're asking in the big group all the time, you only have one answer. But when you ask and then trickle it out for, like I say, short three, five minute 
breakout rooms, breakout teams, then everybody's engaged, not just the one person who's answering the question. So the more you can create little pockets of engagement and ongoing engagement throughout the meeting, the more engaging the staff meeting is going to be. The other thing you can do is share roles. You don't always have to be the one leading the meeting or running the meeting or even creating the agenda. Those can be shared roles that everybody rotates. You're wanting, your job as a leader is to grow your employees, help them reach their potential. Letting them practice creating agendas by letting them practice running meetings, by letting them practice having running a little exercise during the meeting. Then everybody's getting the opportunity, A, to engage, but B, also to grow themselves, get outside their comfort zone and create that ongoing leadership development that you want in all levels of your organization. The final thing that I'm going to say about this engagement piece is I want you to think about both the bookends of your meeting, the beginning of your meeting and the end of the meeting. The very first thing you say and the last thing you do say, engage, are what people are going to remember most. So when you come into the meeting and you start the first meeting with a really contentious agenda item, that's going to be tough. Or you start the meeting by just, you know, okay, I got a few things to cover uh, and you drone on for the first 10 minutes. Again, people are going to disengage. You want that first thing to draw them in, pull them in, excite them, energize them. It can be an activity. It can be a question. It can be some news that you're telling them that's exciting and then have them cheer and clap because they're excited as well. But then that end activity, that end thing, if you end on who said they would do what by when, if you end on that, okay, that's kind of like, you know, okay. But you want people to leave the meeting with their chin up, their shoulders back, maybe a smile on their face. I was talking to somebody, she said, I will share a motivational quote. Okay, nice to have. But do one extra step then. Share the motivational quote and say, how can this apply in your day and go around the room or get people to write it on a sticky note or think about it and share it with the person sitting beside them? How does this inspiring quote inspire you? What does it inspire you to do today? Create engagement by making the things you're talking about real in their life short term. Not la 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 la, some fancy thing off down the road. But what are you going to do with what we're talking about with your team, with your clients, with maybe your personal life? How are you going to use what we talked about today? That's engagement. When we're actively involved in, enthusiastic about, and committed to what we're learning, that's Gallup's definition of engagement. That's how we know that something's happening. We're excited. We want to be there. We're learning. It's making our lives better. Take time to make sure that you're doing this so that you're creating that engaging, exciting, and energizing staff meeting. Prepare ahead of time. Make sure you've got the agenda prepared, you're prepared, and you've prepared your team. Communicate in an effective, engaging way before, during, and after the staff meeting. And then finally create that engagement. And you do that by engaging people and creating that excitement and energy that you're bringing but then it's creating that synergy in the team. That's what creates engaging, energizing, and maybe even exciting staff meetings. If you want to grab those 10 questions to decide whether these agenda items belong on your staff meeting agenda, I'll make sure to put the blog in the notes. And also, if you're a member of the training library, I touched on that there is also a whole lesson on the one-to-one -one sessions and supervisions that you're having with your staff and how to run those more effectively. When you shift from just enduring through staff meetings and having your team endure through them and you shift to creating engagement in your staff meetings, that's my dear, when you and your team are going to move from surviving to thriving in both your leadership and life. Go make the rest of your day awesome, my dear. If you found today's episode helpful, then you are going to love the training library. Many women leaders in nonprofits wish that they had a coach or a mentor to help them, but they don't believe that they or their organization can afford it. Oh, but you can. Inside of the Training Library membership site, you will not only get access to affordable and easily accessible ongoing personal and professional development training, you will also have access to a leadership coach at your fingertips. That way, when you hit those inevitable challenges that leadership will bring your way, you'll have both the resources and the support to navigate your way through them with confidence, composure, and while keeping your integrity intact. To find out more, head to kathyarcher.com library. 
If you are enjoying the show, I'd love it if you could leave me a comment or a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks for listening. Go make the rest of your day awesome.